Lars has a current salary of $38,650. I'm going to write whatever number I hear. I'm just going to write it right down real quickly. Oh, you may be wondering, why am I using a pen? Because I don't make mistakes. That's why. So if he gets a raise of 3280 already going to write down that other number, 3280 what percent is the raise? The question. What percent is raise uh, of his current annual salary? Right. In the pond, there are some lotuses which stand above the water. And though their roots feed, they are themselves untouched by it. Some others have risen only to the water's level, and others are still underwater. Shall I seek to measure these differences, Master, that I may treat them differently, each according to his growth? Examine the flower. Is not the flower in each position yet a flower? Shall I then treat each man the same? As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all. Yet, the flower beneath the water. Down to the nearest whole percent. We're already practicing the problem, the and that ends up being the key we'll instruction. I'll show you why at the end. Round to the nearest. Accept the ways of others. Respect percent. Whole. Whole percent. Okay, this is where texts get tricky, right here. Okay, if you don't follow that instruction, you will lose. Take the L. Take the L. Okay, that's an L right there. All right, let's see. Well, right away, we know we have a percent problem. Um, so there's lots of formulas for percent problem. I'm trying to think of one that's real pretty. Let me see. Uh, Oh yeah, right here, percent increase. And you got this little formula, percent increase divided by 100. Amount of increase divided by original value. I don't know if you can see that, I'm gonna zoom in for you. Oh yeah, right there. Now focus, focus. Uh, nope, it's not liking me, so I'm gonna force it to focus, okay. Anyhow, barely visible, okay. But basically, amount of increase over original value. That's what it says right there. If you wanted to do percent of decrease, it's almost the same thing. Amount of decrease over original value. The divide by 100 part here is just uh, to turn a number into a percent. This part can be skipped. Okay. Is of is another part that I was thinking that, man, if you memorize these formulas, you'll be, you'll be golden. Okay. But let's say you don't have a quick little guide uh, to uh, re refer. Well, how can you think of this to get the answer? Oh, I got to zoom back out. Okay. And focus again. Thank you, people, for waiting. All right. Well, all I know is that if I divide these two numbers, I'll get the percentage. I'll get a decimal. Okay. My only trick is to know in which order to divide them. Okay, and the way I think about it, if I do 38 divided by three, I know I'm gonna get a big whole number, which doesn't look anything like a percent. But if I do it the other way, the small number divided by the big number, I know I'm gonna get a decimal. I know that's not the greatest way to think about it, but that's usually my go-to cheat sheet, okay? Uh, maybe we could come up with another way to do it based on Writing it out like this, what percent of 38,650 is, which is another word for equal sign, 3,280. Okay, if you write it out like this, what percent of, look what happens. I can replace this with a times, because of means times. This should be the word is, I cheated. Is is equal sign. I bring down the two numbers 
And then what percent is the same thing as saying, uh, let's do, what's your favorite letter? E. Okay, E percent. Me too. That's one thing. So E percent times 38,650 equals 3280. That's probably the more logical way to think about it. Some percent of, of our salary is going to give us the uh, amount raised, okay? Typically, it's only 3% that you get, which barely covers inflation. All right, but don't get me started on reality. Let's stick with theoretical math. So I know if, if I could just start guessing at this point and just do 3%, 4% and see what I get, you know, I could do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually follow the algebra. I'm going to solve this algebraically. And what that means is I have an equation. I realize that. I'm going to draw my wall because I went to middle school. That lets me know this side and this side, you know, two separate sides, okay? And why that's important is because I know whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. And I also read Stephen Covey, so I know that I want to begin with the end in mind. So what's my goal at the end? Well, my goal at the end is to do E percent equals a number, equals this number. That's what I want to know. I want to know what percent, what percent, okay? I can even just write what percent. Forget the E. E's for losers. What percent? Okay, so I know that's my end goal. What percent is 3,280? That's my end. How do I get there? Well, in order to get this guy by itself, the, the percent, I have to get rid of this guy. This guy is bothering me. Okay? So how do you get rid of a bully number, a number that's bothering you? You have to find out what cancels him. Okay, and it just so happens in math, the easy way to cancel something is to do the opposite of what they're doing. So in times, we're gonna divide. We're gonna divide by 38,650. 38,650 divided by 38,650 cancels it. Boom, you've eliminated the bully threat, eliminate. But now, Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side of the equation. Remembering that rule, that's a golden rule, and that is, uh, what's that called? Prior knowledge. Like you have to know that ahead of time. When you get here, there's nothing to tell you to do it. You have to know that. So, I'm going to go ahead and divide this side by 38,650. Here we go, here we go. You ready? 3,280 divided by 38,650 equals 0.084. So this equals 0 0.084. Okay. Oops. I don't want to confuse you. I'm going to say this, this thing equals 0 0.084. What percent? Never mind what I just equals that. Okay, so all I have to do is convert that number to a percent. How do I do that? Well, my way, oops, now you can see it. I have to convert that number to a percent. Okay, the official way, let's start with the official way, is you multiply by 100. That's how you convert a decimal to a percent. So 0 0.084 times 100 equals, yo, 8.48. Uh, percent. Okay, so now we go with the E. E percent equals 8.48. Done. 8% 8 increase. Not bad, people. We're making money now. But here comes the problem. You ready for it? Get ready for it. I look at my answer. I got 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. My answer, 8.4. Eight can almost go either way, it can almost be 8% or 9%, depending on which way I round. Okay, yes, technically it leans more towards eight, but if I'm looking at the number that the calculator gave me and it had nines, I may be tempted to just round this up to 0 0.085, and then I really don't know which way to go. And then I'm really in the middle, theoretically. So between eight and nine, 
We're out to the nearest whole percent, eight and nine percent. Which one do I pick? Okay, because I took a peek at the back. I know that the book wants you to pick eight percent. This is where uh, tests can get really tricky. Even if you do everything right, it gets close. You have to know that 8.4 technically rounds down to eight. Even if it's 8.49, you don't make that a five. And how you get there actually is if you do this step correctly, the times 100, okay? Um, if you do it the other way, which is how I wanted to do it, 0.849, and you just move the decimal over two spots, wait a sec, two spots. Why would I move it over two spots? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 0 0.0849 was the thing and then I move it over two spots there you go 8.49 if you do it like that maybe maybe it's better 8.49 percent and then you know to round to eight but look how close that is okay so that's where tests are tricky okay so it's good to practice tests moral of the story boom we done